Good evening, welcome to the Greek Gods and Goddesses tour. I'm Dr. Paul Karitsis, and today I'm going to be giving you a short exposition on another water entity, just like Aphrodite over here, in Poseidon. Poseidon is one of the mightiest Olympian gods, second in prominence only to Zeus, together with a host of other gods and goddesses that included Zeus, Hades, Hestia, and Hera. Poseidon is the spawn of the Titans Cronus, or Father Time, and Rhea, the Earth Mother. An explicit reference in Homer's Iliad expounds the notion that when Cronus divided the cosmos up amongst his children, Zeus received the heavens as his dominion, Pluto or Hades, the underworld, and Poseidon the seas. Poseidon is a master, a king, an all-powerful magician of the water element. In fact, one could say that the world's oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, geysers, and streams all dance to his changing temperament and disposition. Given that the Greeks lived on lands circumscribed by water, their dependence upon the sea's tranquil mode of being was fundamental to their existence. Because it pervaded nearly all areas of their lives, one was bound to encounter a deep-seated and profound reverence for Poseidon wherever they ventured. Foremost amongst his personal belongings was a bejeweled palace that sprung up from the ocean bed, a golden chariot and a three-pronged or forked spear which imitated the wand of the great mother goddess. With it, he could stir up white beards and water spouts from the depths of the seas or instigate the tranquility of doldrums. He could make the scene navigable or unnavigable whenever he so wished or desired. Striking the trident on the ground usually resulted in far-reaching consequences that included but were not exclusive to the formation of island springs and geysers, drowning and shipwrecks, as well as destructive earthquakes. The latter is the principal reason why he gained the dreaded epithet Enosigeos, uh, which denotes the condition of shaking the earth or earth shaker. According to most classical sources, Poseidon uh, wed one of the 50 daughters of Nereus, uh, who was also a granddaughter of the Titan Oceanus. She was the sea nymph Amphitrite, and sired, he sired a plethora of children, both gods and demigods. Many acquired a disconcerting habit of growing into fearsome giants. Titus, his son by Alara, daughter of Orchomenus, his son Orion by Uriali, as well as the handsome twins Otis and Ephiatis, his sons by Ephimedia, daughter of King Theopas of Thessaly, were all Herculean in stature. By far his most flamboyant and outlandish children were his progeny by Amphitrite, the sea entities Proteus, Glaucus and Triton. Proteus was as elusive and enigmatic as the element under which he was born, possessing an inherent ability to change his form at will. Glaucus, on the other hand, was a was a prominent merman and seer with supernal aquamarine eyes and tufts of green seaweed for hair. Trident was also a merman who entertained the horde of sea demons and entities inhabiting the seas by belting out beautiful melodies on a conch shell, his version of the modern day brass trumpet. In the Trojan War, Poseidon takes the side of the Archaean or Greek forces. His anti-Trojan sentiments stem from a bitter dispute with the king of the gods, Zeus, in which he emerges second best. Together with Apollo, he pays his repentance by agreeing to refashion the walls of Troy as a supplicant to the then king of Troy, Laomedon. The promise of a hefty payment motivates both Poseidon and Apollo to commit to the task and perform to the best of their abilities. However, a subsequent change of heart on the part of the king not to award the two Olympians Angus Poseidon beyond reckoning, who conjures a behemoth of a sea serpent to attack the Trojan infidels. This single event represents the inception of Poseidon's implacable hatred against the Trojan forces and elucidates why his sentimentalities remained with the Greeks until the great conflagration that eventually engulfed Troy unfolded. In the ordered scheme of Mother Nature, the horse, the bull, as well as all forms of sea life were sacred to Poseidon. His Roman equivalent is Neptune. And that concludes today's lesson. 
and uh, I will see you next time for a discussion on Hera. See you then.